As we all know, over the last year, legacy financial institutions have taken a liking to Bitcoin. Today, we got some huge news out of MasterCard. That's right. MasterCard is going to be facilitating Bitcoin and crypto payments, and they're going to be doing it using a platform called Mercurio. What's the catch? Welcome back, everyone. Let's dive into this story. Mercurio launches Spend, a virtual MasterCard that lets users pay with non-custodial crypto. Hmm. The euro-denominated MasterCards issued by Quico are designed to bridge the gap between self-custodial crypto wallets and traditional payment methods. Spend provides digital asset holders with a widely accepted payment card that Mercurio claims can be opened in minutes and integrated with Apple Pay or Google Pay with the funds automatically converted into fiat for merchants. So, so far, this is sounding pretty decent in terms of mainstream adoption, right? Uh, personally, for someone like me, I don't, I mean, I'm not in Europe, but let's say they brought this type of product uh, over here to the US. I'm not 100% sure that I would actually use this. I would definitely look into it so that I could understand it better. But I, I don't know, this... I just don't, I just don't like where this kind of stuff goes because I I inherently understand that hey well you know if I'm going to be using a credit card then all of a sudden there's going to be a whole bunch of data points that they're going to want to attach to me. Spend can be directly embedded with non-custodial wallet provider applications. Okay, as a plug and play solution providing the same level of protection as traditional debit cards. However, it requires additional KYC and AML verification procedures. Hmm. So is this kind of like the the breadcrumbs that they put, right, in order to get us to KYC AML our signing devices slash our hardware wallets? Right. Because that is a big thing that that is something that uh, we've seen in the past where institutions are saying, well, hey, listen, you know, you can self custody your own stuff, but you have to tell us which essentially you have to um, validate yourself as being the owner of those addresses. So to me, this looks like a further encroachment, another trick in order to get more people to KYC AML procedures. This product is not just a card, said the CEO. It's a step towards a future where digital tokens can be spent in a highly accessible and commonplace way, much the same as fiat. So actual cash can be spent without KYC AML. It can also be earned without KYC AML. So indeed, indeed, the wording here... <laughs> I think the wording here is very clear <laughs> in much the way as fiat, right? Which is money by decree. Um, but specifically, specifically though, it is the type of fiat that it is, right? It's not cash fiat. It's more like, it's more of the credit card, debit card fiat with all of the enhanced tracing capabilities that the banks and the governments love so much. Now, you're probably wondering, you're, you're, you're probably wondering, Phil, this doesn't sound so terrible right now. This, this actually sounds like it's okay because, hey, there's some people that genuinely aren't going to care about KYC AML. Granted, we don't know what their level of understanding of those procedures are, but we know that some people simply, and I should say many people, just don't give a shit. Um, but here's what the, we're going to take a look at the fees around what this, what this costs to use. Spend is currently available to users in the European economic area incurring a 1.60 euro issuance fee, a 1 euro monthly maintenance fee with a spending limit of 40 thousand euros per month. Mercurio also plans to roll out spend in other regions globally. So for the people in the States, right, the, uh, the issuance fee is a buck 78, the monthly fee is a dollar 11 and the spending limit per month 
$44,393. And you'd say right away, you'd go, well, Phil, $44,000. I mean, hell, how many people are spending $44,000 a month? They're not really trying to cap us. Guys, once upon a time, um, when you were crossing a border, they came up with the law that you couldn't cross with more than $10,000. Now, back in the back when that law came out, $10,000 had an incredible amount of purchasing power. But we fast forward 40 years from the time they came out with that law, that rule. <laughs> that 10000 bucks is worth almost nothing. Um, so in terms of purchasing power, so this right here, what you are seeing, okay, this $44,000 a month, okay, this is part of the carrot on the end of the stick. Hey, they're not trying to limit us really, okay? They're being reasonable. And when you see a number that seems so high, you say to yourself, well, I'm never really going to, you know, most people are never going to get to that point in spending per month. So what does it even matter? It's not even a realistic limit. We're not paying attention to inflation. We're not paying attention to the never-ending money printer that doesn't stop and that continues to erode our purchasing power. I suggest that quite possibly in the next five to 10 years, that $44,000 per month limit is going to have the same purchasing power as about $5,000 a month. Anyways, th this is, to me, this is actually scary. I, I do believe that this is part of the Trojan horse in order to continue the push for KYC AML. It is also the Trojan horse to get people to use Bitcoin in this way so that we all continue to stay in the walled garden, paying their fees, being monitored, and being controlled. Finally, okay, and this is interesting because I had to dig through a few articles to find this. It turns out that Mercurio also charges a 0.95% fee, okay, on every single transaction. These reflect the balance of, conven of convenience against operating expenses encountered by this method. So, of course, as you guys know, I, I've always talked about how I've worked for a Fortune 500 company, and I'm very well versed in the uh, corporate brainwashing bullshit language that they use. So that last line that I just read to you about the whole balance between convenience and this and that, it's just a bullshit thing that they made up. And and of course, somebody will say, but Phil, it obviously costs them money to run operations. Indeed, it does. I'm not suggesting that it doesn't. All of that is already covered. This is just a grift to grab an extra almost 1% off of every transaction. And the reason is, right, It the reason is, is that it's about the network effect, right? Because in the end, Mercurio isn't actually really providing any value. They're simply just providing... Um, a walled garden for us to step into so that we can continue to wear the same shackles we're always wearing. Um, so yeah, I look, I know that this seems like huge news. Um, I was really excited to read it also, but in the end, in the end, I, I think that this is just a mirage. I, I think that this is just a, a hoodwink in order to make us think that Bitcoin adoption is happening and this is how it's happening. And really, it's just a way to keep us in the walled garden. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to talk about today. 